So this video is going to be special because we're busting out the bromine ampule. This video I'll be making some experiments with some homemade bromine. The reason why the bromine has been ampulled is because it's extremely volatile. It leaks out of almost every container that you put it in, so using an ampule is the only good way to store it. Bromine vapors are heavier than air, and when I've put them on my backdrop they seemed to have reacted with something and made it visible. So for the first experiment we're gonna need some sodium and bromine. First I've added some drops of bromine into a beaker. As you can see a few seconds later the beaker is already full of bromine vapor. To the bromine I've added some sodium chunks. To initiate the reaction I've added some water. As you can see some sparks fly out, out of the sodium and that's because bromine is one of the very few elements that can actually support combustion, just like oxygen. After some time the reaction finishes and we're left with some harmless sodium bromide. For the second experiment we're gonna need a test tube, 2 mils of bromine and some regular aluminum foil. After around a minute a violent reaction will occur. After the reaction begins the bromine starts violently boiling and consumes the aluminum. After the reaction has been finished, I've added some water, and some mine fumes came out of the test tube. And that's from aluminum bromide, which is the product of the reaction, starts reacting with water to produce hydrogen bromide. What's interesting is when we zoom into the reaction, we can see something that looks like a miniature storm in a test tube. During the reaction, a giant bromine cloud was produced, and even 10 minutes after the experiment, the earth stank of bromine. Now you may be thinking that by performing this experiment, I have issued a gas attack on my neighbors. Sadly, that's far from the truth, and that's because I filmed a video in the morning when mostly no one was inside. Also, bromine in extremely small concentrations is relatively harmless, however, it does have a strong smell. Okay, so for the next experiment, I'm gonna sacrifice my finger. Last video on fuming nitric acid, I've tested the effects of the acid on my finger. And since bromine is a liquid, I'll do the same here. So unlike the acid, when it came to bromine, I didn't really feel it on my finger. I'm not sure why. But after 30 seconds, uh, my finger started to itch a little, and I've had to put my finger into some drain cleaner solution to neutralize the bromine. The whole video I've been using sodium hydroxide drain cleaner to neutralize the bromine. Speaking of neutralizing the bromine, for the last experiment I've decided to neutralize the rest because I didn't want to release more bromine vapors. When I've added the bromine the sodium hydroxide solution, it started vigorously reacting. The reaction with sodium hydroxide and bromine creates sodium hypobromide, which is basically bromine bleach. On the next video on my channel, I will be using this solution to create bromoform. However, I haven't edited it yet, so here's the end result. It's kind of sad that all of the bromine that I've made ended up in this small vial, and now that I don't have any bromine, I've decided not to make any toxic volatile liquids like bromine until I get an actual film hood. So if you want to see the process of making in the bromo form you can subscribe. Also I have a bunch of other cool footage recorded and it'd be Sigma mail of you to like the video.